Can you define a dramatist versus a storyteller? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> a storyteller is just making up a story. And any kind of story, whether you're making up a little five-minute story for your kid to go to sleep with or you're coming up with uh, Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, yeah, like high-end complex storytelling. That's huge. And to succeed as a scriptwriter, you need storytelling skills as big as you can get them. The craft of the dramatist is connected to storytelling, but distinct from it also, because the craft of the dramatist is how you dramatize a story to adapt it for theatrical presentation. So it you have to make your story so that actors can perform it on film, on TV, on stage, and that it grips the audience. So the audience is on the edge of their seat wondering what comes next. You're making the material compelling and conformable, uh, performable. So the craft of the dramatist is ancient. <clears throat> Uh, the first person who really chimed in on it that we know of was Aristotle. He was not a playwright, but each year Athens had a religious theater festival in which a topic was assigned to the playwrights of Athens. So Aristotle would, over a couple day period, see 25 different versions of uh, Euripides. Not that was a playwright of... Um, well, what's, I'm blanking on the name of the play, um, Oedipus. So uh, he was able to compare and contrast all these different playwrights' takes on the Oedipal myth. And he found that some of them put the audience to sleep and some of them really gripped the audience. And he's like, well, what is it about those dramas that grip an audience? Is there anything common among them? And he found that they tended to have a good, strong dilemma, building to a crisis, forcing decision and action in the face of crisis with, with a resolution of the dilemma by the protagonist and uh, a denouement, the upshot, the epilogue. Uh, these were things that Aristotle noticed tended to be common to those dramas that gripped an audience. And then throughout the years, there were French classicists who did amazing work and um, Shakespeare and, and, you know, just playwrights in general. And the science has continued to evolve. Um, there was a, a, a new set of tools were created by this um, script, this Broadway script doctor, William Thompson Price, uh, that he put out in his book 1908, and he was teaching to his students. And he created these tools because he found that most of the scripts that were submitted for Broadway productions that he was working with the Broadway producers on missed the mark in some way, a high degree of them. And that's still true today that 90 to 95 percent of all scripts submitted are, do not work at all. They're horrible, rejected, unreadable. And the, and the studio readers say, don't kid yourself, it's 98%. So what Price did was he said, these people are not landing in the ballpark very often. And they're not stupid. And they're good storytellers. They don't have enough craft as a dramatist. And Price was trained as a lawyer. That was his first profession. And being trained in the logic of argumentation the ability to state a complete court case as A and B, therefore C. And that is a rigorous process. And if you present the logic of a court case in the proper way, then it's irrefutable. You prove your case by A and B, therefore C, and your client wins. So he said, there ought to be a way to state the complete action of a script with that level of simplicity and clarity. And he, by, by adapting 
the proposition of logic to drama, he created this tool because a proposition is A and B, therefore C. You're proposing that this is true and this is true, therefore this is true. And he worked on it for a long time. He never ceased to be dissatisfied with it, but he created it and advanced it and was able to help their students. His students' plays work. 24 of his 28 students had hits on Broadway. Um, but he was constantly trying to synthesize it better. But it definitely worked. And um, there was another playwriting teacher who I found out later was, who taught Price's technique of the proposition after Price, Price died in 1920. Uh, Price's student wrote a book in 1928, which was what those two books I read for three years. And then this other playwriting teacher wrote a book in 1950, but he'd been teaching Price's proposition and he advanced it even further. And what this teacher said was, um, I'm trying to remember the exact wording. Can I read it to you from my book? It's, I have it right here, if that's helpful. Oh, you do? Okay. I know it by memory, but I'm not dredging up all of it. <clears throat> this is my book, Writing a Great Movie, uh, Key Tools for Successful Screenwriting. So let me read you actually a quote by Price about the proposition he's writing in 1912. One main proposition is the essence of unity. It is unity, and unity can be procured in no other way. It is impossible that two main ideas exist in the same play. The house will be divided against itself. Two bodies cannot occupy the same space at the same time. The play itself, that which is developed from the one idea, is about many things, but the discerning eye of the author should penetrate to the heart of things. True dramatic instinct, which is largely the product of training, usually does this with unerring promptness, for that one idea is naturally the largest idea. A proposition involves the whole play. It must have a certain magnitude, and the play must be commensurate with it. It suggests action, for the last clause requires that a problem be worked out, doubt is expressed, the facts are given, opposition is encountered. So that's Price talking about it. And then here is Bernard Grabagne in his book, Playwriting. He says, Eventually, Price was able to formulate his law of plot, the proposition, which we are quite willing to agree is the one significant contribution to the science of playwriting since Aristotle's poetics. This was the judgment of many of his students, among whom were the most successful American dramatists of their generation. It is a large remark, but as we say, we do not dispute it, even though Price's very name seems unknown to the public or to the scholars these days. If we ourselves were asked to whom we were indebted for the basis of our ideas about playwriting, we should have to answer Aristotle and Price. Price really brought something entirely new to the craft of the dramatist, to the craft of making a story work dramatically for a presentation to an audience in such a way that it grips the audience. And it's, it's a, it's a complete craft in its own. And it's just entirely distinct from storytelling from one point of view, and yet completely married to it because you're dramatizing story. <clears throat> it's one of the things that I, an, an analogy that I recently stumbled onto, because what I'm teaching is seven powerful tools, and we spend two years learning them in this training program, so we'll spend months on each one. And you have to acquire expert facility with each tool, and then you gradually synthesize them together into one unified expertise. And I compare it to learning how to juggle while you're riding on a unicycle on a tightrope. You have to learn each of those skills separately and then synthesize them together into a fluid capability. <clears throat> so it's just a set of skills that you get better and better at, and you have to keep improving your storytelling 
Because if your story ideas are weak, it doesn't matter how much craft you have as a dramatist. If your stories lack magnitude, then it's not going to help much. And that was a, a point echoed by uh, uh, Ted Elliott or Terry Rossio. They wrote uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and a whole bunch of other stuff. They said one of the most central problems we see in scriptwriters trying to succeed is that their core idea is poor. And that's so true. People put all this energy into trying to turn a weak idea into a stage-worthy script. <clears throat> and it's, it's so central to it. Uh, I had dinner with a showrunner of a top um, network uh, TV series, and she was saying that she sees so much bad writing that will not work for their show and she can't show it to their to the star because he won't do it. And she said that there's that the writing itself is often so poor that you have to like decipher it to get at what they're trying to say. And when you finally get down to the kernel of the idea, it sucks too. It's like there's no there, there. There's all this stuff built around something that doesn't work in the first place. So storytelling is hugely important. And the craft of the dramatist is hugely important. You can't succeed as a scriptwriter without both of them dialed to 11.